one of one of us goes goes out. I do you know what? No, that was me. That was me. Are you talking about the last podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a little accident. Um, I was hoping nobody would notice. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I think everybody did. There's this really clever feature on uh, on my on my pro software, where it um, it takes different people. If different people are talking, like they're all talking at once, it it takes one person and it and it mutes the other people. Not mutes them, but it, it mutes them. It mutates them. <laughs> <laughs> It's it mutigates them. It, uh, it, it's, it's called the immutigator. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and it takes it down. I think it's like if there's also if there's music and stuff like that. Uh, I do it automatically um, uh, on, our, on our other podcast for Coffee and Cocoa News. And I have the music. And then when we have stories and we have a break between the stories, I just hit a button. I select everything, hit a button, and it all goes it, 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 like that, basically. Magic. <laughs> um, yeah, and it does it all automatically, which makes uh, which makes it look like I've done a whole bunch of work. I just wish I had a boss because I could be like, oh, I spent the whole weekend oh, editing those files. It was it was okay. I got it done. It was you can always send so yourself an email. What? You can always send yourself an email to your yeah. own boss. Yeah. Did you bring your coffee with you? Like your um, coffee beans? Because I I and ooh. did you get the memo about the suit? No, the memo. The, you got the notebook. I have oh. my notebook. Well, that's not the so same. I can look professional. And I have a very cluttered desk, which actually I just noticed it doesn't show. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, if we're going to look talk cluttered, mate, <laughs> look how I've got here. Huh. <laughs> look, is it, oh, wait, can you see? Wait, what, where is, where's the camera pointing? What have I got? You, eh, look at that. I got my <laughs> desk spanner. I got my desk spanner uh, for when my desk gets squeaky and I have to fix it up. This Ooh. also works on fixing the um, fixing the. But do uh, you have your deck your your desk grinder? Okay, <laughs> trying to outdo me here. I'm a little feeling a little bit inadequate. All right, but I've got my I've got my coffee twirly thing of which I know that you don't have one. I know I am very jealous now. But and I was actually I was on AutoCAD and I was designing my own uh, single dosing funnel for these. <laughs> how about oh, that? How well you've got that thing there? Yeah, yeah, measuring everything. So I have a caliber, my laptop, seventy-five meters of of cable. Uh huh. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I I got to a point where I don't, know, I don't know anymore what's here because I have more than one. It laptop becomes there. invisible after a while, you know. Oh yeah. Oh oh, I I'm I'm really good at that. It just, just goes away from my field of vision and it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So, uh, so you obviously got the memo about the suit wearing. Yes, smart I'm today. wearing a uh, um, a home cloth <laughs> because we're in lockdown. So I am being comfortable. I I was hoping that I was going to fool you and you were going to actually put a suit on for the show, and then I was going to like be like, oh, you put a suit on, Max, and you're going to yeah. be on video looking overdressed. Look, I have one suit, and I got married with it, so I, I and it's somewhere up in the wardrobe huh? somewhere I, uh -huh. I don't really know where <laughs> you don't you don't ever wear a suit huh you're not a suit kind of guy i'm a scientist i mean right, i have one of the, one of my superiors actually has dreadlocks so right hey <laughs> listen i'm not recording to the cloud because i i think i have to pay for that um okay so i'm recording to the computer uh i'm recording twice once on the audio and then once with the video stuff, which is also recording audio. So it's kind of a belt and braces, but it's a fake mm -hmm. belt and braces because if uh, if the power goes out, we'd lose everything. So just That's... so you know, this might be a complete waste of time if something happens. But I'm going to take the risk because it makes me feel all you know, excited because yeah. that's the kind of risks now, you know, back in the old days when I was a kid, you know, it'd be like, can I jump over that river with my motorbike, you know? Uh -huh. And now it's like, ooh, you know, do I dare a power cut and lose my <laughs> recording? Oh yeah, I, I I I like to live on the edge. Sometimes I start an email with five percent of of battery left. Yeah, that I is know. exciting. I know. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get your? Keys? Oh no! Don't don't get me so stimulated so early in the day. Um, <laughs> you know, years ago we got uh, I got sued. I was well, I was I was one of uh, of a group of people. Mm -hmm. I got sued. After after a sense of humor failure from a uh, employee of ours, who uh, yeah I know I shouldn't really laugh about it, but it's so long ago. Yeah, People it's fine. Know, you'd be fine about it now. Uh, <laughs> but we we had a Christmas party, 
Mm. Oh, damn it. I got a light. I got a light source from over there to make me look good. Uh, and now my cats, <laughs> I can't close the door. And now my cat's coming in and it, it's going it to expect to jump up. And uh, it's all right. It's, uh, okay. Cats are actually good for videos. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So this guy, so he sued us because we invited him to a Christmas party. And we told him it was fancy dress and we told him it was, uh, it was uh, uh, Elvis night. <laughs> right. What did we tell my Elvis? I can't remember. We suddenly said it was fancy dress. Mm -hmm. I can't remember about the Elvis, but he came as Elvis. And this is in London in a public bar. And we were all dressed normally. And he walked in through the door like, uh, like this. <laughs> we all burst out love. It was like a hundred of us there. It was, you know, we was a decent sized company. And, 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 uh, and I was a partner in the business and, uh, and he stormed out and, uh, and sued us. We had to pay him. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was an expensive yeah. mistake. It wasn't expect. You know what? I I I still say um, I still say there's a place for humor in the world, uh, even though we're all very politically correct. Uh, but um, true politically correct. We are. We are. That's the thing. But who wants to take the risk now? Who wants to take the risk? Comedians. Ooh. Put it all on the comedians. You know. No, they should... comedians. They uh, they always end up in the wrong in the wrong place. But that's where they're meant to be. They're meant to be in the wrong place, Max. That's why it's funny. Yes. But it, it gets a lot less funny when they start to be sued. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, they're all coming out now and saying, "Well, I'm not going to say anything. You know, I'm not going to be funny anymore." It's like, so I'm going to come out and read the jokes like the news. Yeah. I'm going to stand here for um, 30 minutes and just uh, look at you, and you laugh. Yeah, yeah. Listen. So, for those tuning in, wondering what the hell is mm -hmm. going on, hey, we're going to be talking about coffee. Uh, we've got this this one. Eventually. We've got no, no. You had that yeah. one for a while, the amber. Did uh, you not? Yeah, I had. Uh, well, I don't know. I had two. <laughs> I had uh, two coffees. With... Yeah, we got that one. This one here yeah. from uh... oh god, I got his name wrong. Not Raj. Yeah, but what's the guy's name? Saj. Sajid, I think it's Sajid. Who? Very nice what? guy. Uh, Sajid right. from Amaret in ah. Notting Hill Gate, mate. Is there a name? Is there a name in there? What? No, but I know him. I don't know. Ah, him, you but know. I, I yes. email him. Uh, right. My dad knows him because I send my dad down there to get his coffee. Ah, okay. Because he's um, yeah, okay. Because okay, he's very... nearby, right? And he's yeah, nearby. Yeah. And also, frankly, his coffee is good. Mm -hmm. The bag is biodegradable. Well, I haven't had it yet. I meant to have it, but we can talk about that next mm. week. I only had it here just as a tease. Mm. I um, had one coffee this morning with that one. Very interesting. I don't say anything, because uh, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about Amber, <laughs> Brandon. Fine. And we're also going to talk about this bag that just arrived with no <laughs> message in the post. It looked like, uh, which looked like to me, I'm actually emailing people. I'm emailing sort of coffee roasters that I know going, did you send me any coffee? I mean, it, did, it didn't really look. You maybe know. maybe it was one of the ones that we didn't like and he sent you a poison coffee. I, well, well, funny. say that. Uh, but, you know, we have upset a few people and um, I don't no, you think... upset people. I, I never. I, Max, them. this is all. It's not about me. It's about us. And you know that I use your name whenever there's anything um, particularly right. <laughs> controversial that we like to <laughs> we like to say. <laughs> Uh, so I could reach out to a few people and I said, mm -hmm. uh, you know, look to Gigi and they're like, no, no. And I was wondering, you know, is it a trap laced with rat poison? And I'm still it wondering wasn't. that, even though I know it's come from you, I, I still it wonder. Wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Is it because you didn't get your Christmas card yet? No, I've put, I've put the poison, but I've also put the antidote. So you're fine. Right. So I feel ill for a little bit, but then I get better. Yeah. But, I... but only if you extract it right. Yeah. If I so screw that's... it up, it's, oh, that would be exciting. Wouldn't it? Yeah. If like you extract it coffee. right, it's not going to kill you. But if you yeah. don't, it will. This reminds me. This <laughs> reminds me of a game show that I, I, I wanted to discuss with you. It's part of, uh, it's part of my get rich plan, basically. So okay. basically, as you know, I, I don't believe in get rich quick schemes, but this plan mm. is going to make us rich and quick. I like it. And uh, what it is basically is uh, you've probably never heard of a service called Quibi. We, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's gone now. Anyway, um, Hollywood threw two billion at it, as they do. Uh, they went around. They said, uh, you know, give me two billion. So they went, yeah, fine. Sounds like a good idea. We don't like this whole. We don't like this whole. I don't know what it was. They went, uh, bah, 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 TikTok, mm -hmm. TikTok, and movies. We we can do that. We're Hollywood for the love of God. So they started. They came out. And they did movies on things. But you know, it's like just throwing money at something without the without the love, the passion. Mm -hmm. um, 
it, it, it doesn't, you know, it's not really formula for success. So what they did was, but, but they did have some really good, like short movies. It's all about short movies. Yep. And one of them was this game show. <laughs> it's the best ever. Right. Mm -hmm. And they would, uh, they would make a cordon bleu, like Michelin style meal. Okay. Then they'd right. load it into a cannon and shoot it 50 yards or 50 feet or something at a chef, hit him in the face. Right. <laughs> so they would, why? Well, then the, the chef, without using his hands, would have to, mm, mm, and then lick it, lick it, the lick at his shoes and lick at his you know body and his lick his face and try to guess what the meal was. And I'm <laughs> thinking <laughs> it's just a genius. It's almost as good as the Japanese game shows. Uh, so, so that's no, 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 no. Wait, don't touch Takeshi's castle. I grew up with that. What what castle? No, no, I'm Takeshi's talking about. Castle. Is that the one where they would like have all the torture? They'd have to crawl yes. under. Yes, yeah, fantastic. Yes. That was amazing. Go, this is the best. <laughs> the best. But what are you talking about? No, but, okay. So here's the idea, right? Because mm -hmm. let's get onto my get rich quick scheme. It's not yes. a get rich quick scheme. We're just going to get rich, but it's going to be quick. So quick. what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to load single origin coffees mm -hmm. into water balloons. Yes. Right? And we're going to catapult them in the face of baristas. So obviously, it hits them in the face. With, and, boiling, with, with uh, boiling water. Yeah, okay, okay. Once the scalding is gone, they have to lick <laughs> the coffee off and say, it's um, <laughs> definitely a Colombian. <laughs> what do you think? This is going to be huge on YouTube. Huge. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Look, we we'll put it in your name in case there's a lawsuit. Uh mm -hmm. And, um, I just, you know, look, it's I a think team. I'm gonna go I, got, I can't do everything, Max. I have the ideas. You've got to take some risk with me. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whilst you're thinking about that, my lawyers will send the, uh, the letters over. <laughs> uh, the contracts will be in the post. Um, so anyway, this is, there's that. So we're going to be talking about uh, Amber Coffee from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Not shot. Place that I really want to go. What? Not shot through a catapult. No, no not, not, in not yet. No, just a trebuchet. Uh, we're going to talk a trebuchet. You're nerdy, aren't you? You're nerdy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk about whatever the hell this is. Aha. Uh -huh. Actually, I quite like. Aha. Uh -huh. well, spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, but then I also, because I thought what I'd do, uh, mm -hmm. and I thought what I'd do is I would show people kind of like, I'd almost show them what's on my, my coffee desk but without <laughs> actually being on my coffee desk because okay. obviously I can't go down there. Um, but I've got this is my tamper. I've got a very basic tamper which I don't use anymore. That you don't use anymore, so it's it's just collecting rust now. It's by I don't know by somebody. So I got off Amazon, and I got <laughs> this. It's quite heavy. It's quite heavy. This 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 little nice little spinner thing. Uh huh. Um, it's an adjustable one. But it's adjustable, so uh -huh. as you turn the top, it loosens. Uh huh. And then you can make it smaller, the or bigger, and then you tighten it up to whatever mm -hmm. size that you need. So that's technically it's uh, halfway through between uh, um, tamping and uh, well, I skinny thing because I know I don't really push distributing. Down. I actually actually don't know how far I'm supposed to push it down. But I tell you what I do: if I'm grinding fine, mm -hmm. I know very fine. I notice it comes out a little clumpy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what I do, what I should have brought up here. Because I've only I've obviously kind of half cocked here. What I should have done is brought up the other important tool in my arsenal, which is if I've got clumpy coffee, mm -hmm. I uh, I have a chopstick. I have the I'm, other one, I think. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I actually only have one. I don't know where the other one is. Uh, although I am. I, th I told you, know, you I got it. Okay. Yeah, you've got you've got the other half of it, <laughs> and I I just declump a little bit in there. I dig yeah. around a bit and, it, and I actually it, it sort of works quite well. Yeah. And I then bet. I do the distribution and then I, I don't bother, bother about tamping it at the moment. Um, yeah. Which if you had a niche, for example, or with a, with, or if you were grinding into a container, mm -hmm. if you were grinding into a container, actually you can just shake it off and that would break the clamps. Uh, yeah, actually you. that's what I want to do. I want to do, I want to, I'm going to grind into a dosing cup. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the problem is I've got a couple of different grinders and different people use the, oh, you know, that wouldn't be a problem because all the other people in the house use the other grinder. So the two grinders I've got mm -hmm. are a 
um, vastly over what's the word um, not overused over over purposed over um, yeah over engineered over engineered grinder no. which is a um, I don't not know what it is what is I it know again? What you mean. They're too big for for the yeah. I've got a big commercial grind, basically <laughs> the seventy no sixty five yeah. mil burr, uh, flat burrs, and uh, and it's meant for for coffee shops. When I put a little short hopper on there, mm-hmm. uh, and I sort of single dose. Usually goes that. through like. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So I've got one of those which I which I use because I like the the sort of the the flavor profile it produces. But then I've got a um, sage. Oh, something pro grinder it's the one that uh, everyone's the got dozer. no the no dozer. not a dose not yes. a dose it's a, just it's the regular sage or breville to mm. american it's friends. like the rocky the ranchito rocky similar yeah that sort of size thing there which is using the um the <coughs> ceramic um uh burrs what's the other burrs called the flat burrs the, the conical Conica. okay, so, so i've got one of those yeah and so it's not the rocky then yeah. So the but the conical burr um, barista something pro whatever it's called grinder from Breville, mm-hmm. that um, that is is very good f- if I want to get everything I put in out. So if I'm for example when I did the uh, the James Hoffman, we can't go a show without mentioning. <laughs> no, we, we have guys to, gotta be thinking like these have guys have seriously it. got some kind of weird obsession with me. Yeah. Very unhealthy. <laughs> Um, but, but, but he did a tasting world's biggest tasting thing the other day, like mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And I did that and I had all these little packets. And the thing about that is you're literally, because you're doing, um, you know, in, in your, in cupping, you're doing lots of different, you're not just doing one type of coffee. You're doing several different types of coffee all at once. Yeah. You don't want to have the residue in a flat burr. So you're going grind mm-hmm. one coffee, then grind another coffee, then grind a different coffee. And you don't want bits of the old coffee in the, in the grinder left over when you do the next one. So mm-hmm. a conical burr grinder is really good for that. Yeah, it has it, less retention. You have very little retention in it. Exactly. So yeah. I have those two grinders. And I actually do a, a, a live demonstration of where the, the coffee st- st- sticks, if you uh-huh. want. <laughs> so when you have a flat burr grinder, if I, if I manage to lift it <laughs> so that the camera is the yeah. grinding that is the grinding bit right and this uh-huh. is where the burr sits now i've taken it off uh, because yeah. i'm measuring it for doing something yeah. else. and these things do the spinny spinny very fast yeah and they basically they catch all the grounds in this space here and they push them into this into this area here and then uh-huh. they they are pushed oh, that goes through down. that opening there now, normally here you have a dozer. What I'm what I'm doing now is I am designing a piece of uh, probably aluminum or whatever is easy to machine mm-hmm. to put here flat and to have a sort of a funnel coming out mm-hmm. so that it's going to become a single dosing. Um, the issue that you normally have is the coffee that is left here because these are not obviously, that they can't be fitting with a very small tolerance because otherwise it's going to start scratching, it's going to start smidging the coffee in there uh-huh. extracting the oils and if i ah, this thing is really heavy by the way mm. oh, it's meant God. to be <laughs> um got good quality there max and it's heavy I, I don't know i think it's made with cast iron with pig iron in, inside it <laughs> <laughs> um so when you have coffee in there if, if there is not enough tolerance, you start having uh, the coffee smidging to it. So what you have, for example, in the niche grinder, which is uh, one of, I think, one of the best solutions, it's heavy machined, heavily machined surfaces. So everything is super flat. There's no, um, no um, texture whatsoever on top of the surfaces. So yeah. coffee doesn't stick to it. And it's also easy to clean. So yeah. you can actually reduce the tolerances and reduce the distances between the spinny thing, uh-huh. the sweepers, and uh, the, the sitting uh, machinery, and you have less retention. In these cases, you tend to have more retention because it sits pretty much everywhere. The first grinding, you're going to have coffee sitting everywhere and the saturating all the spots where it doesn't exchange anymore. Uh-huh. But you always have to, you're always going to have, so when you open it, you're going to find, for example, if you use it for a while, you're going to find lots of coffee stuck everywhere. Uh-huh. That doesn't exchange. That's not coffee that you're going to find. It's it's stale coffee. It's old coffee, and you should clean it 
every so often, but you shouldn't be worried that, uh, oh, that I'm drinking that. No, you're not drinking that. That doesn't go anywhere. It just saturates everything and it creates some, some sort of a little cement, if you want. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I imagine it does. Static is the is the big enemy as well. Yeah, static at the beginning, but then when you when you grind and grind and grind, after static, you start having, for example, um, oil from the coffee coming out and then cementing. Yeah, sticky. Exactly. And that's why... Well, the heat and the oil makes it all gucky. There you go. So that's why after a month that you're using it, for example, when you go in with something, uh, with a chopstick or something wooden and you, and you clean it off, it comes out in chunks. And the first time you grind, you put 18 grams in and you're probably going to get uh, 16 grams out because two grams are just gone to saturate the thing. What I'm doing now at the moment is uh, I'm designing uh, adapters to reduce these spaces so I wouldn't have as much coffee sitting around. Wow, you must have a lot of free time. So, um, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, definitely. Heat and oil is is fine if you're having a massage, but uh, not in the world of coffee grinding. Yeah. So, uh, also, also, you know what? I got a dirty secret, Ooh. dirty little secret, and that is that I regularly go down to my Waitrose, and I get old Mister Hoffman's Union hand roasted coffee from there because you know it's just a backup like in between because when i screw up all the coffee orders like i'd have done the last few weeks <laughs> uh then when i screw it all up you know i i need to have something to drink and so uh love the worst thing the worst thing is is i go down early in the morning because you know i get up at ridiculous times i get up at generally between four and five but but the last few this last week we've been having um conference calls i say we uh, other people in the house I've been having conference calls to Cambodia at 2.30 in the morning. So I wake up at 2.30 or 3. And then I go down and I make a cup of coffee and <laughs> at 3 o'clock in the morning. And um, and uh, then I look in the hopper <gasps> and it's like, oh, my God, I've got an empty bag, right? What I was using for beans is empty. And I look in the hopper and I'm like, is there enough to make a coffee? three o'clock in the morning like i'm gonna have to wait six hours or something till the shops open that's just it's it's a, it's really disappointing it's a really disappointing start to the morning and why ever risk a disappointing start with the morning when simply a bag from waitrose a bag of you know backup beans and you know there's no reason they should be backup beans because actually pretty good but i oh, don't know no, shut, shut up shut about- <laughs> up Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> don't say a don't say a word. There's absolutely nothing wrong with them at all. Look, they're not, you know, they're from waitress. Look, they're not freshly roasted. That's the only thing. But it does have, it's the only beans, the only beans in waitrose that has a roast date on it. So at least okay. they put a roast date on there. And you know, okay, it's two which months is, old. Which is two years ago. No, that's, that's <laughs> the Labatsa. I think that's in the Labatsa <laughs> section, Mr. Mr. Max. Uh I'd like some, I'd like some stale coffee, please. Which aisle do I find that in? That's yeah, in the Italian it's... section. <laughs> oh, shit. I've just, I've just lost all our Italian listeners. Um, so uh, I like, you know, obviously love Italian coffee, which I do. Where is this right? coffee from? Where is this? Is it? Wait. That is from Santo Domingo. Yeah, I get that. I don't know where Santo Domingo is. In Dominican Republic. Ah, Okay. So right. it's a, it's a very rare coffee actually because uh, they don't export much of it. They mainly what they do is they drink their own coffee. So they produce it and they drink it and export very little of it. And it's extremely rare to find it. And whenever you find it for single origins, it's extortionately expensive. So mm-hmm. that one is actually a gift from my wife. No way! It, oh, bless she's, her. She's the bestest. She's uh, great. She she's amazing. How did how did she end up with you, Max? Was... I don't know. I got lucky. I got really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes wonder. <laughs> but how I am she, a lucky. How person. did she get it? Um, so you can order it from Amazon, but it comes from Germany because they for some reason it doesn't import in the UK. Mm-hmm. So it's it's uh, it's called Cafe Santo Domingo, and um, mm. they, they they ship worldwide. It's actually quite a big grocery there. And uh, so we've been, the story behind it is that we've been uh, to the Dominican Republic together with my wife and uh, we had coffee there and it was amazing. It was it tasted really good because they have a very, very big culture on coffee. Mm. And I think we already started uh, this coffee journey, or at least I was already refurbishing machines and tasting different coffees. So I, I 
sort of knew what I, what I liked and what I what it should taste like. And um, I remember this coffee that's amazing uh, because it has a very particular uh, flavor. It's not, uh, you know, it's not one of these um, single origin, crazy, fancy roasters. It's a very solid dark roast for espresso or for um, pour over, but it's, it's really tasty. Mm, and yeah, um, yeah. so maybe there is a little bit of bias from my end because obviously I remember the, the, the nice time uh, on the holiday just doing nothing, which is great. Um, or, no, but uh, I loved it. You know, I didn't I know the history. Very, I didn't yeah. know it, get it that your that your wife had bought it. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I put it in. You said pour over or americanos, mm -hmm. and that's what I've been having it for. I actually had it this morning as my americano. I've made um, some pour overs with it. Actually, and I hate to say this, I'm sort of like an alcoholic confessing, but I, I sort <laughs> of I've sort of been having a lot of pour overs recently, Max. I I don't want to. <laughs> I know. I don't it's, want, it's to, okay. I want you to feel it's like, you know, I'm still true to espresso. It's just, it's, you know, I'm having a dirty little fling with the pour over culture at the moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, I have to say it was really good. It was really good in, I, I, I like them in both. I think I preferred it in the Americano. Uh, yes. They made a really nice espresso. You get, you get the more bitterness through it. Um, it tends to run quite fast. Um, for some reason, I'm hearing myself a lot back now. I think mm. it's uh, coming that from. That must be terrible for you. Because let, let, now I know. you know how I feel. I know. I, I am so <laughs> sorry. I feel so bad. <laughs> um, so that actually, if it run, tends to run a bit fast, if it runs fast, it, you get a lot of the of the of the flavors of the smells, but you don't get a, a very a very good crema. You don't get very uh, a very dark um, um, extraction. So you have sometimes you manage to have quite some bitterness but you have to grind really fine because otherwise it tends to run a bit fast grinding very fine i'm grinding very mm -hmm. fine i'm putting in my basket i'm gonna say 17 grams uh, yeah. very fine and it's running for about 25 seconds yeah that's what i normally do 18 yeah. grams and 30 seconds yeah yeah and it's coming out good it's coming out good really mm -hmm. liking it uh look forward to the next shipment uh, which <laughs> reminds me which reminds me that um i bought you a christmas present what did yeah. you buy? And no, no, you're absolutely not going to like it. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> and <laughs> you're absolutely not going to like it. Uh, it should be coming to you the next couple of days. And I like it, but I don't more, like it. After you, after you have finished not enjoying it, uh, I want you to send it back. <laughs> okay. Uh, so <laughs> happy Christmas. It's the best you're going to get from me. That's amazing. Yeah. You're I, have, I have a confession as yeah. well. So the, co the, la the last coffees... They are supposed to be the ones I don't like because they're fruity and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. I what? <laughs> it's not possible. I I purposefully went for the for the antithesis of you, Max, of what I know you like: plum, strawberries, and cream. How can you like that? I actually that's my kind got, of coffee. I actually got strawberries and cream out. You will not believe it. I got them out. Well, and they I, taste really good. <laughs> they do taste really good, but uh, you know. <laughs> The whole point of this podcast is I'm supposed to get you stuff that you hate and you complain. You've, 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 you're, you're backtracking on our agreement. <laughs> yes. Doo -doo. So, uh, and I'm really liking the, uh, the dark bitter roasty stuff, the Italian uh, coffee. I know. What, what the hell happened? I don't know. It's like it's one of those like, 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 like Tom Hanks movie where we've, we've exchanged minds or something. Yeah. This road reversal is weird. Yeah yeah Damn. so so are you making this um this amber coffee let's read about it. let's let's talk about it yes uh, so i'm gonna get my notes i i can't remember how i found them because they're in a and we should be on c's or d's yeah um but i obviously found them from somewhere and i just thought well i could make a note and run back around like in my spreadsheet and go back to it or i could just buy it and then not have to worry about doing admin work later i thought well <laughs> Obviously, that's that. the most lazy, you know, option. Mm -hmm. um, this is a red bourbon variety of coffee, uh, and uh, if you could read the farm name, Max, just read that farm name for me. That would be great. Yes, I've read it. Okay, and <laughs> uh, it's from a farm uh, in Rwanda, mm -mm -mm. Uh, and it's natural processing. So that's the other thing too. When I saw natural processing, I thought. <laughs> Ah, but it's not unwashed. You're going to hate it. Well, it's not what? It's not unwashed. 
I thought it was dry processed. I thought that's the that's the synonym for natural means dry. Yes. Yeah. So you basically natural natural means dry because I know this is very confusing, but natural means dry processed, um, and wet processed generally means um, uh, with water. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think they don't say wet. unnatural. The problem with natural is that the antinym for that is unnatural. Notice how I used a clever word there. Uh, and so some people don't like using the word natural processing because it infers that processing with water is unnatural. Mm -hmm. um, but let's just say wet and dry processing. This is a dry process, so it was not washed. Um, okay. And uh, which my son totally, you know, uh, uh, understands. He, he aligns to that. Um, washing is something that's very antithesis, an antithesis for him. <laughs> I have to talk to him about that. It's like washing his clothes. Like, I don't know. Anyway, let's not talk about it. No, but just carry on. Um, it's from <laughs> quite high up. And I've been reading actually oh, about wow. terroir. Again? Yeah. Yeah. It's now twice in one year. And uh, I've been reading about the position of the sun and mm -hmm. altitude and angles and the equator and how all of this comes together in terms of the amount of sunshine uh, and quality right. of sunshine that the coffee plants get and the effect it has. It's actually very complicated. See, before, when I was ignorant, and I'm talking two days ago, um, <laughs> I used to think that it was like, it was just like it was cooler, but it's not that it's cooler. It's also that you're closer to the sun. And if you're on a hillside like this, and you've got the equator and the earth at an angle because it's going like this, then if you're planting on a hillside, in actual fact, the sun is coming down like that, yeah. you actually get more direct sunlight mm -hmm. if you're like that you get i think it's something like you got at a 38 yeah, yeah, degree sure. angle or a 43 degree angle you actually get less when you take a look and you do the the trigonometry and the geometry mm -hmm. you get a smaller patch of sun over when, when it's flat than when yeah, it's at an angle you'll know this i'm just repeating words like an idiot hoping that i sound smart but don't really understand it but well, i know it's uh, so let's say that uh, this is this is the sun yeah if you have something like that yeah. or something like that yeah this is in the shade if it's like that yeah that's like exactly it there you go done <laughs> that's exactly it well you're well done that's you very go. yeah yeah that's uh that's very I could have used another finger but i've been i've been nice don't push it um, <laughs> yeah so we've got that so it's anyway so it's quite high up uh plum strawberries no sorry plum strawberries mm -hmm. not plum strawberries uh strawberries and cream milk chocolate I, I, the milk chocolate's like, hmm, okay, what's the difference between milk chocolate and like, I mean, what kind of percent cacao are we talking about here? Like, what kind of chocolate? Milk chocolate, dark? I, I, maybe uh, milk and dark. Maybe I'm just being, I'm splitting hairs here a little bit. Yeah, but, you're nitpicking. Okay, <laughs> I'm nitpicking a little bit here. Um, there is obviously, I think, I think the chocolate, I'm going to go out a limb here, and I know I'm wrong when I say this. Mm -hmm. I can't help myself, but uh, I sort of feel, like there's a certain taste that it's like they sort of say i don't really know it's call it chocolate <laughs> just throw it in it's call it chocolate and you can kind of it's it's chocolatey but whether mm -hmm. it's milk chocolate truffle <clears throat> dark chocolate I, I don't know whatever it's it there's like there's i think there's just a general category of chocolate that's kind of like you need to have it to fill in the 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 taste description yeah i think i agree with you that i um, actually if i look through my my notes i ooh, yeah if i don't throw everything on the on the floor mm -hmm. which i haven't be good mm -hmm. uh if you look through the notes there is hardly any chocolate mention uh i think the chocolate where, where you put chocolate in it's uh it's sort of yeah the the, the, the little roasty flavor at the end if you uh -huh. really want Right. Sort of like, mm. Yeah. Anyway, look, the important thing, the important thing was you liked it. I also I like it. Uh, I've been doing a lot of pour overs with it. Um, That's but, something I haven't done. Were you doing espressos with this? I'm doing only espressos. And actually, mm -hmm. uh, so I went with the grind. My, <laughs> my first approach was I went with the same grind I use for the, for the Dominican, which mm -hmm. is extremely fine. So basically you get the, you know, one coffee molecule. 
and you split that in two, and then you split that in another four, and that's how fine I grind. Right. Yeah, it's very fine. And so I tried these, and I forgot that these are um, light roasts, so you should grind a little coarser. So in uh, about uh, 30 seconds, I had no coffee. Uh, no, 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 no. I had one drop. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was the coffee machine. I, I, I was actually imagining. And uh, did you drink Oscar. it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I threw it. I, I, I just, I was imagining the poor Oscar just like that. They... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, I... <laughs> so there was this ceremony of about twenty minutes of grinding and doing and heating and stuffing and then put it in, disperse, stamp, put the thing in. 30 seconds, one drop of coffee. It felt a bit, I don't know, I started laughing and that. <laughs> yeah, then I I've get very it. depressed when, I, when that happens to me because I feel like I've just wasted the coffee. Yes, but at least, see, the thing that we were saying last time that uh, you were pointing at that you have, uh, oh, you can, let it go for a little longer. I can't because I have it set for 30 seconds. So after 25 seconds, I was looking at it and, and a little droplet was starting to appear. I was like, mm, that's not going to go well, is it? <laughs> yeah. It's not going to work out. One drop came out and then... Pfft, yeah. And everything went through into the uh, three-way solenoid. It's a sad waste. Yeah. Anyway, so I've done it again. And uh, uh, I've adjusted the grinding of just one step less. In 30 seconds, I got 25 grams out. So it was a bit kind of a ristretto, really, mm -hmm. uh, from 18 grams. And uh, I immediately wrote definitely strawberry and cream and the sort of chocolate finish. That is always something that I struggled to get at the very end. Uh, but you get the, the plum smell and it was, you know, it leaves, you, leaves your mouth, mouth quite dry, which was interesting. Um, 17 grams instead um, made uh, 42 grams of espresso. So it actually makes make, makes a big difference and i got tiger stripes mm -hmm. i consistently get tiger stripes with these with this coffee so i mean it took me left oh, i've got enough left for a few more cups um I, I might try that i've sort of been enjoying it as a as a v60 and i um and uh the few times i've tried it is an espresso i found whilst the flavor was nice the taste was nice that the mouthfeel was uh, was was very was very thin. Oh, and it you know actually fits quite neatly. But well, uh, I think I've been doing it wrong. So you've now inspired me to go back and um, and to put mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more coffee in there. I'm going to take your I'm going to take your uh, your um, formula. And actually, what I was thinking to myself was, yeah, I'm going to make ristrettos with this, not uh, not espresso. It probably would work. It yeah. What I found is that it's very easy to tune in because, I mean, my third coffee had tiger stripes, which means that I'm bang on with the extraction, uh -huh. roughly. Right. But you know what we're going to do at the end of this? When we finish with all the coffees, I mean, obviously we're on A's right now. Uh, we've yeah. been going for six months. So um, well, when we finish... By, by then, we're going to forget what we've done at the beginning. Like <laughs> We're going to go back and do it all again, but this time with milk. Uh, I, I'd like, can you imagine we do this all again, but we now say, now... You know, five years ago, we tried this with as an espresso, but now to see what it's like, it's a flat white or a cortado. Yeah, like there's, a, there's actually a problem with that. Um, so as you know, I have at the moment in my kitchen, there is, there is the Oscar sitting. Mm. So I have an Oscar too. Mm -hmm. And please, someone buy it from me. Take it away from me because I'm starting to make too many cappuccinos. <laughs> Every time I go there, I was like, I'm going to make an espresso. No, I'm going to make a cappuccino. Because I need yeah. to froth. You need to froth. Well, look, my to... sister would buy it from you, except that she gave me a, a bunch of strict criteria. I was literally talking to her last night, and this is how it went. So my sister, you have to say, I do a family call every Friday. Every mm. Friday night, do a family call, 6 o'clock. And uh, my dad and my sister jump on. And my, my dad's always first on. He's, he's very prompt, right yeah, on like point. King. <laughs> point that he's locked down he's not a lockdown kind of person he's kind of a very social person mm -hmm. and uh, then my sister always comes on late um and then she's always knitting so she's knitting <laughs> somehow because i'm pretty sure knitting takes two hands somehow as knitting without looking she also has a tennis ball and she has like four rescue dogs 
from around the place. So she's little dogs that she rescues. It's one of her things. She'll throw the tennis ball. So she'll be talking, knitting, throw the tennis. Oops. <laughs> Throw the tennis ball, you know, the dog will bring back the tennis ball and she'll continue on. And she won't even like, I and like she subconsciously processes picking up and throwing the tennis ball, continues in knitting. Anyway, so whilst doing this, she's saying to me, Nick, uh, I'd like to be able to make a cappuccino. Can you recommend a machine to make cappuccino? And as I opened my mouth, she said, but I don't want it to be made out of plastic. And I don't want it to be more than, you know, 100 or 200 pounds. And I don't want it to be, what was the other thing? And I don't want it to be difficult or take a long time. What would you, what would you, what would you recommend? I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I um, and then she looks like, you know, disappointed. Well, you're the coffee guy, but you're, you're, but you're the coffee person, you know, it's like, well, okay, but you don't want it to be plastic. You want it to be like a couple hundred quid. You don't want to spend any effort. Do you want it to be easy? Okay. I, I just don't think I said you could couple separately of boil pounds. the milk. You could make the milk, boil the milk and then get it. Fresh. Too much work, too much work. <laughs> I want to be. So I want to push a button. Ah, actually, ah, 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 ah. Uh huh. Uh, she can. She can get um, coffee from anything really. Uh, yeah. A cheap coffee maker. Yeah. Cheap coffee maker. Even a a, a Gaja baby. So mm-hmm. the one with pressurized porta filter. Mm-hmm. So coffee comes out nice. Uh huh. Very easy to dial in. And on the side, instead of using the steam to make cappuccino, she actually could get one of those. Uh, um, Frothers. Make frothers. Yes. Yeah. From Nespresso. I had one in my in my previous life and uh, it wasn't bad. They you were. don't have uh, you don't have brothers or sisters, do you, Max? No. Yeah, let me explain how this works to you. Let me explain. Let me explain why that's a that sensible idea is is a non non starter. Okay. Because what'll happen is as soon as you recommend something like that, they all go and do what you said, buy what you said, and then call you every day with the problems that they're having. Uh, but that doesn't give any problem. <laughs> but it that does. doesn't have problems. If, if he has a problem, it's broken. It's literally that. Well, I, I think you're right, underestimating the possibility of, of my sister to, <laughs> to not work stuff out. You, you do know that you're actually, you're putting your face within it, right? I do. She knows this. I love her dearly, but she knows this. <laughs> she knows this. Uh, so we're in lockdown again. Yeah. So everyone's getting their coffee. And uh, there was a story this uh, this week in a uh, website called, oh, called uh, Bar Talks. And ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bar talks. <laughs> and uh, we were talking. I, see what you did there. I know, I know. It just comes natural. Uh, or unwashed, I should say. Um, <laughs> uh, they say comedy's dead. <laughs> Uh, dynamic duo <laughs> and uh we, there was it was talk there was a study done actually about mm-hmm. i'd be interested in, in your take on this study done on um people taking their coffee like people having coffee at home now and 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 are they drinking as much coffee are they making it are they've just moved from drinking to drinking what they actually found was actually coffee consumption has dropped because we're looking at the price of coffee and coffee's stacking up uh in places like brazil um, they're not selling all their coffee because demand has dropped because the, the amount of coffee people were drinking at cafes has not been right. enough to offset the amount of coffee people drink at home. The rationale being, and there's actually a number of different ways you can interpret it. One is like, we haven't worked out how to make coffee at home yet. And the machines haven't arrived or whatever. Um, mm. They're, they're just getting used to it, acclimatizing to it or whatever. But I think probably more likely a, a more likely explanation is that people uh, go to coffee shops to not just drink coffee, but to have a bit of a gossip. And that was the real reason. And it's not really the coffee as to why they're going to the coffee shop. It's um, it's the ambiance and the, you know, meeting up with Max to have mm. a gossip. You will have no idea <laughs> what Sam's doing at the moment. It is True, scandalous. But I mean, people would still do the same uh, at home. I I don't know. I don't agree with that. I think there is a there is um, something different to it. But carry on, please. No, that was it. Ah. Um, but I would say that, <laughs> <laughs> that was I was really I was hoping for you to fill in the rest of the time. But I okay, can, thanks. No, well, well, do you, <clears> okay, do the question. Opinion. Let me let me be specific then. So the mm-hmm. question is, do you think the future of coffee consumption? Do you are you bullish? as they say in the in the in the stock mm-hmm. market or bearish uh as to the outlook of oh. overall coffee consumption i've heard this before 
Well, I, I don't know. I think I think the coffee consumption is going to go up. A little really? Bit, a little okay. bit. Yeah. Because if these carries on, eventually people will start um, buying coffee. But obviously, it's going to be a percentage of, of who goes to a coffee shop. It, it, you're not going to get uh, people that go, you know, let's say that we ha- you have 100 people that go to a coffee shop. I'm playing with them, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know why. It's like a, it's like a fidget spinner. Yeah, it's a very, very heavy fidget spinner. If it falls, actually, <laughs> we'll have to replace the, the floor again. And no, 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 no. Anyway, uh, what I was saying, if you have 100 people that go to a coffee shop, you're not going to have 100 people that are willing to buy a coffee machine and start making coffee, first of all, because it's, it's a pain. Uh, it's expensive. Not everyone is going to buy a coffee machine because uh-huh. most, of, most of people would go to a coffee shop and order whatever slosh they have on tap. Yeah. So, yeah, can I have that brew that you brewed three days ago, please? And I pay you two pounds for it. Um, so that's one thing. Second, not everyone is going to, to, to want to do that. I mean, uh, it's an effort. And you have to buy the beans, you have to buy stuff. And you would buy from supermarket and supermarket anyway, they are overstock for everything. So even if these of these hundred people, 50 buy beans from the supermarket, the supermarket is not going to notice much. Mm. It's not going to offset the, the, the market. I think, I think that the, that kind of market is uh, sort of separate. Mm. I um, think there's a lot of people going to be buying capsules. That's Actually very bullish on the capsule market. Yes, I agree with you 100% on it because it's simple. It's simple. Machines are cheap because they're cheap as chips. Yeah. It's a, it's a piece of plastic with a pump. They work really well. They work incredibly well. Yeah. For the extractions. Uh, you see, so yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't see, I don't see, unfortunately, I don't see any sort of margin for um, good coffee machines to, yeah. to, to become a thing. I, I sort of agree with you there. I I, I wow. think you okay. No, clearly <laughs> a fever or something. Um, but uh, no, I I I I wish it was the I wish it was different. I mean, there'll be there'll be an uptick, right? For sure. Absolutely. It's not going to it's not going to match the overall trend and the and the amount of uptick that that the push a button and don't and forget like the the fire and forget kind of market is going to is going to benefit the most. And that's why I think um, Breville will, will do really well. Yes. They'll pick up that sort of that middle ground. Mm-hmm. I think all the Nespresso capsule things will do really well. Um, talking of which, actually, again, on this uh, Bar Talks website, that oh, it's just an amazing website. Yeah, I mean, Great they seem to. Definitely go check it out. They really know what they're talking about. Yeah, I th- um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out. Right? There, you should definitely check it out. Uh, there's a article on uh, on Single Origins from Nespresso, and they're mm-hmm. um, you know, investing in Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, this week, I was talking about it. And going on for my COVID walk, uh, in the morning, my lockdown walk. Your COVID walk doesn't sound very. <laughs> my, <laughs> like yeah, you're no, to let me rephrase that. Uh, going for my my lockdown walk early in the morning. Better. As soon as it gets light, I go out for my walk, and I, I now know everybody on the walk, and I chat with them. And there's this one guy, Cyril, and his wife, uh, Christina. Um, and he goes comes out with a coffee cup, and I'm like, "Where's my mate? Oh, is that related? You know, like this kind of stuff, right?" <laughs> and uh, and uh, like an idiot, I said to her, I like asked him, I said, "Hey, where are you from?" It's like, and he's talking, "Oh, you need, you're definitely from South Africa, right?" And he's like, "Yeah," because you know South Africans have a very pronounced accent. Uh, yeah, in Cape Town. Oh wow, so, okay, yeah, Cape Town's very cool. Uh, I heard I've never been there. Uh, and she said, "I'm from Zimbabwe." And like an idiot, I go, hey, they uh, Nespresso just investing a lot of money in Zimbabwe coffee. And as I'm starting to talk, I'm thinking, why would you say that? Why would you? Yeah, it's one of those things that Nespresso has had made a big investment in. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know, but you, when you start talking and then you realize you're saying something really stupid and but and but you're committed now so you have to be started. <laughs> yep <laughs> so we'll see tomorrow if uh, i walk and they and they you know walk to the other side of the road then or like the, maybe you know, they're just gonna wait until you're past and then but and then go out <laughs> but the point, <laughs> the point actually you know I, I could look at the point was on this that um they got some very they got a number i would be very interested to taste what some of those 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 
capsules taste like. And because I think, I'm going to go out on a limb here, don't really know, but I think uh, the patents expired on the design. I think you can you buy. expired uh, a long time ago. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm actually. just catching up, all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. I've been buying Nespresso compatible capsules in a, for, oof, yeah. for, an, for an espresso machine, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you could fine. buy them. So, so I'd be very interested to know what some of those things taste like if they got like, you know, nice single origin. I did an interview last week with mm -hmm. uh, Arc Roasters and they do this. I'm, it's going to come out next week. So check it out. Guys are really good, really nice, really, actually really pleasant people, really pleasant mm. people. Uh, but they make this, these small batch roasters. Uh, but they make this. <laughs> batch, batch roasters. Yes. Max. The beautiful machines and they make them, they sell them in places like you were talking earlier about uh, people who roast them, but sorry, people who produce coffee, but, um, but consume it in, in country. Mm -hmm. So it's made for, for uh, markets like that, like in Africa and places. Right. I told them to send me one. I don't think they will, but you know, you never know. You never um, know. How big, how big is They're the... pretty big. I mean, they're, ah, yeah, no. I mean, you know, they're, I, like, I mean, they're about. How, how, how much uh, was the throughput? I just, I just watched the video. I can't remember. <coughs> can't remember so they're, they're, okay no they got they but the th good thing about them they come with different barrels so you can add drums sorry yeah drums <laughs> barrels or shotguns um and it comes with different drums and so you can actually expand from one drum to four drums so you can kind of grow with you and you can you oh. can move it as you can start with it as being a um you can start with it as being a, your um your main roaster if you're mm -hmm. like just doing very small batches, like if we've got a small business, we're making just a few coffees for, you know, whatever the community, and then it grows, you can then add drums to it. And then eventually it can just become, you get a bigger roaster if you're doing really well, and then it becomes your sample roaster. But because it's gas fired and, and, and in a drum, it's a very, you know, the flavor profile and how you do it, it, it matches how it, you're going to roast it on the real roaster, as right. opposed to if you're using uh some of those other ones we air roasting tech technology it's roasted in a different way and anyway, this is what they're explaining to me like what do i know i know nothing but it's, no 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 it's just i, I was just asking because it was very the... interesting it was actually a very interesting conversation all these I things every time i hold these interviews i learn something i mean you know so um so it's like free education thanks very much but anyway that's coming out next week and yeah. I can't remember the point to it all, but but <laughs> Africa single, I don't know, single origins, Nespresso capsules, uh, capsules. Uh, what what about uh, capsules, single origin? The sing, yeah, the sing, Oh no, what they were saying was because he was laughing when I said single origin. I said, "What are you what are you laughing at, mate?" Uh, and he said, "Well, it's just a bit of a kind of a misnomer, single origin." And he's absolutely right because I, even I knew this. It's just the terminology we all fall into. But mm -hmm. really, what you're talking about a singular state. Single origin just means it's coming from Colombia. It can come from, it can be completely different. And most of these coffees are actually blended. Mm -hmm. you know, frankly, you might say it's a single origin, but it's really blended because it's that farm over there plus that place over there plus yeah. Billy over there has thrown his coffee in. So it's kind of a blend. And so it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a fake term, but, yeah. but I would still like to get some of these, these coffees that are speciality coffee in a capsule and see what it tastes like. Well, I remember, so Nespresso used to do, um, I think they still do, uh, different flavors, different strengths uh, in their capsules, and actually, they weren't. You could tell the difference from one to another. It wasn't anything crazy, but you could actually tell differences. Um, yeah, I kind of liked it, to be honest. And so, the, the winning point for capsules is is that they're extremely reproducible. I mm. mean, they're li literally bomb proof. They're so reproducible that I think I mentioned these uh, at the uh, at the very beginning of our collaboration. Uh, you can modify an espresso coffee machine with with a capsule with a make do capsule to do uh, extracts extractions from natural products this is heresy heresy i tell you but you can and it's it's actually it's bang on because they are designed to open at a certain pressure so you you will reach that pressure at that temperature and you, you will always have the same profile of extraction so it's Max, I mean, Max, Max, you can stitch different parts of, of different animals together and still have something that lives, but that doesn't mean to say you should. I agree with you, but I don't. <laughs> You're that mad scientist guy. I don't want to be anywhere near you when there's lightning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I only need a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, God, you know. So we're in lockdown. We're in lockdown. We're going to end. We're going to end on a story. I got to share this story because it's so confidential. I'm not supposed to tell anybody. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't wait. We only have, we only have 25 listeners anyway. We're going to keep everything anonymous. Mm -hmm. So my friend uh, Billy. Uh, <laughs> what, what's, what's the surname? <laughs> you shouldn't say the name. There's, there's, the there. I've, there's a makeup. It's, a, it's her, her pen de nom. Uh, it, it's, it's if you can call a WhatsApp chat pendant on uh, up, up in deck to me. No, Max, no, no, go. I know you need to. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, you know, I just sold my house. Well, not my house, Well, obviously it's my house, but not the house. Uh, I mean, if you manage to sell someone else's house, I good for you. <laughs> you, to sell someone. <laughs> you know, I sold your house, Max. <laughs> I wouldn't um, mind that. Oh, listen, look, you've got 48 hours. <laughs> you get out of there because they're moving in. Look, um, I, I sold your house. What? I sold your house. I would love to say that to somebody. <laughs> uh, I bet that used to happen. Uh, no, I sold uh, a house that I have. There is a movie actually where um, I don't remember what comedian, but it used, it used to be a thing uh, that um, people used to sell um, Italian landmarks to American tourists. Oh yeah, well we famously yeah. sold the London Bridge uh, many times uh, to, to Americans. So, God bless America. We haven't invented anything. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> nothing's ever invented uh, except for my amazing get rich quick scheme on yes. the um, shoot in the face coffee idea. Coffee balloons. Uh, coffee, yeah, coffee water. Trademark. Balloons. Coffee. It's it's, it's patent. Big, huge. It's going to be huge. Yes, it's going to be huge. Uh, huge. Huge. Uh, Billy. Oh, so this story, Billy. My yes. friend Billy wrote to me because she's a uh, therapist. Uh, or if you see the movies with uh, Borat in them, The Rapist. Uh, <laughs> oh. Did you see that yeah. movie? And he's no, like, but oh my God. The joke. Okay, you know the joke. Okay, so anyway, she's a therapist mm -hmm. and uh, speaks to people who have, who have all these issues. You've got to understand that, that most therapists deal with people who have a lot of money and that you know first world problems you know give you an example um uh husband and wife very upset not talking to each other because the wife was only given true story true story was only given sixty thousand pounds about seventy five thousand dollars as a dress allowance for the year and that's unfair because he bought a new porsche for one hundred ten thousand pounds and you know how am i supposed to go out to society with only sixty five thousand pounds of money to spend on dresses i don't think i spent sixty thousand pounds in my clothes my whole life my whole yeah. closet doesn't come to anything like that um, <laughs> i had 36 years so, <laughs> and i haven't <laughs> so uh, these are the kind of problems that my friend deals with and uh so this person came to her and is worried about her job mm -hmm. can i can i can i do a, a thing i don't know what's that, that thing do. does her training involve keeping a straight face when people say those problems and say mm, yeah oh that's very interesting yeah yeah it does although i think oh. she's she says that like she's taking notes it looks like she's taking notes she's actually doodling or making her shopping list um so uh Problem. anywho uh yes. <laughs> she, <laughs> she some of them are awful apparently so um so this person she's this person comes to her and says i'm uh, i'm very concerned i'm gonna lose my job so why is that I said, well, I've got to be honest with you. I'm sort of addicted to listening to psychic hotlines. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. She says, yeah. She says, um, so she's she's a, a lawyer, right? She's a lawyer. She does. Um, she's a, a solicitor, I should say, a solicitor that deals in conveyancing, which means the ones that get your houses sold. Because this is related to me selling the house. Very, I was told because I was told mm. selling the house. Watch out because it's going to be like pff, lawyers two months. Yeah. Oh, back, if you're backlogged. Lucky. Yeah, if you're lucky, backlogged. Like you <laughs> couldn't believe, backlogged. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying yeah. to find. A, I'm trying to find a solicitor. I actually got a good one. So I'm actually doing some work. So this lady was a solicitor doing mm -hmm. the conveyancing, and she said, "I'm a bit worried I'm going to lose my job because I spend the whole day on the phone <laughs> to the psychic hotline." And um, my friend says, uh, "So you know, so." how does this work? She says, well, I, I go to the office and I, I do one bundle. So the lawyers call a package of papers, mm -hmm. a bundle. She said, mm -hmm. I do one bundle up. So I make, so it looks like I'm doing something. So I get the bundle done, email it out, whatever I do. And then she said, I literally spend the rest of the day just on the phone to the psychic hotline. 
you know, what's my life got in store for me? You know, should I go shopping today or tomorrow? Should I buy a lottery ticket? I don't know, all this kind of stuff, right? She asks mm -hmm. questions. So this has been going on for quite some time. And she got a phone call, the solicitor, from her boss saying, uh, Smithers, because it's not Smithers because it's a lady, but, you know, I like to say Smithers. I like to just say the word Smithers. Smithers. Smithers, Smithers here. Smithers. Come to my office sound. Monday, shop 9.30. It so makes you sound what, sophisticated. Yeah, I do. Uh, and uh, and so she's like, oh, my God, this is it. This is it now. I'm going to lose my job. I've been discovered. I've done no work for the last two, three months. Just go and do this one bundle and spend the rest of the time on the psychic hotline. And um, I've been caught, right? I'm like, oh, she's, she's like, what do I do? She's asking my friend, what do I do? You know, and obviously my friend finishes doodling and says, sorry, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey. She's probably, but, no, hey. I'm sure they, they're my friends very uh, adept at massaging yeah, yeah, yeah. The, those kind of scenarios. Uh, look, don't worry about anything until it's happened. No point worrying about something that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. How so does that week, work? <laughs> well, it worked out quite well in this instance, because the next week came around, lady came in, she's looking pretty happy. She said, tell me how it went. He said, uh, she said, uh, well, she said, I got called in. I thought I'm going to face the chop. Axe is going to drop. Mm -hmm. um, and the boss said to me, um, you're our highest achiever in the office. Uh, I wanted to call you in to congratulate you and ask you how you did it. How are you so productive? <laughs> and uh, this, lady, this lady who spends her entire day on the psychic hotline was in fact the most productive person at that firm of lawyers. And that says it all. About, and that's your benchmark. And that's the benchmark. <laughs> so when you can't sell your house for six months, the lawyers go, we're really busy, really swamped. Start that's reading cards, tarots. Start yeah. reading tarots to them and say, look, you should really do some Ooh, work today. It says cards here saying, in the cards. In the cards, it's saying. work on my case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I just thought I'd share that story, that lovely um, story with with everybody. And yes, this sir. is uh, this is just a comedy a comedy fact. Mm -hmm. Just just to say. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's not 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 real at all. No. Just completely fabricated. Totally made. Never it. happened. Never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So hey, Max, uh, that's going to draw the line. We've been. Uh, hey, well, look, we we've clocked over the hour. I should have a like a like those. I, yeah, we don't have the recording. Length I do here. on a different window. I've got a different oh. window, uh, but you Why don't have, have a different window. Yeah, you've got nothing. You're well. blind. You're flying blind. Well, but no so hopefully this is going to be fine because we haven't, we don't have these on Zencaster. We know we haven't used the Zencaster, and we're using the the Zoom. We're using mm. the Zoom to to make this uh, this recording because I now have to pay for. Oh, I didn't tell you. Oh my God! So awful. Arc roasters. <laughs> Bless them. It's so nice. Um, the first, I would say, 15 minutes of the call was me mm. trying to work out how to record it because I went on. I was like, I was so professional. I had everything lined up. You know, you can see I'm a professional. Mm. Look at my hair. Yeah. This this doesn't come norm. This a lot of work. You think Donald Trump spends a lot of money on his hair? No, no. I have a whole team right behind me next door. I got the makeup. I got the hair people. I was anyway. So I'm prepared <laughs> for the whole arc thing discussion. I had my notes, I'd explain to them the format, you know, and which is like what I normally do. And I always ask for consent before we start recording. Mm -hmm. So I tell them the process and say, I'm gonna start recording and I want to ask for your consent and I'll confirm I've got your consent on the recording and blah, 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 blah. And they said, yes, it's fine, we consent. Uh, I didn't talk mm -hmm. like that at all. I just do, that's my talking voice. And, <laughs> uh, and then I said, great. <clears throat> and I went to hit the button and the button wasn't there. And it disappeared. It had disappeared, right? There was no button. So I'm like, huh, I wonder if they just moved that. Sorry, bear with me just a minute while I, I find the button. Yeah, Several so, years later. Oh, God, I was on the help screen trying to get a hold of Google Help, trying to get in there, looking at the, uh, the things. It's like, oh, yeah, we've updated the way to make it easier for you. You now join as part of your your team administrator has to set you up. I was like, oh, go into the team admin, log in as team admin. Then you have to go and it's like, oh, you need to set your organizational unit and then your policies. I'm like, just a second. I'm just creating an organizational unit. Uh, okay, now I need to set a policy framework. So I'm setting my policy framework up and then I need to go into the policy and it's like, it's still not there. And then eventually I just said to her, please, I, 
can't recall. I said, have, any of you, have any of you got a Zoom account? <laughs> Just and she said, the lady from Mark said, yeah, I got a Zoom account. I said, can you, can you just send one over? And I'm really sorry. So they did. And I looked it up afterwards and bloody Google had uh, taken the functionality away and said, oh, no, that's, that's now only available in the uh, enterprise section. Mm. You have to be an enterprise customer. Right. I'm like, can I buy one enterprise license for me? And, and just like normal licenses for everybody else? Like, no, everybody has to upgrade to enterprise. I said, so I wait. screw you, Google. So wait, you and who joins has to have the enterprise. No, so everybody in my company, everybody right. at Bar Talks, so because I've got oh. a Bar Talks license for Google, I'd have to upgrade all of them to an enterprise license so that I could record, because that's a feature that comes with enterprise. Yeah, that's not gonna. That's gonna cost you peanuts, right? Yeah, it's gonna cost a lot of peanuts. So um, I did not say how many. Yeah, <laughs> a number of peanuts. I uh, I am actually looking for. If anybody wants a job and is willing to work for literally peanuts, uh, I would love to actually. I don't. You can do anything. I don't care what it is. I would love to pay someone in peanuts just to say I pay in peanuts. No, no, literally. He. I send him a bag of peanuts. Ah, my mum's calling. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't, don't know why that. <laughs> um yeah ooh, a burr. <laughs> yeah oh look a burr uh so there we go so they so arc fantastic we'll do that uh next uh next week that'll be out uh okay you've got that but i've got i've got a very large ruler because i'm ebaying everything because i'm i'm going minimalist oh i i was hoping you would you were going to get the spanner I've got, I've got the spanner. And by the way, and that's not the only one in the room. Look how big that spanner is, right? Just look at the but manliness. I a, but I see spanner. a bigger one behind it. Where? What are you talking about? I'm talking to it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you made me look like a real clown. Well done. Touche, Max. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> remember that. Uh, that cold <laughs> dish that you'll be getting later will be revenge. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's gonna be the the poison the poison beans with the <laughs> listen, with listen. The just this is this is now this is now a public uh, a public announcement. What do they call this? Is public um, um, uh, announcements where you're helping people. Public service announcement. Public service announcement mm -hmm. uh, to anybody anybody that doesn't understand why men need big tools like this when they never use them using them is not the point right let me just explain this i this well, is going to be a coffee them. podcast and a therapy podcast uh couples therapy uh we need tools like this in order to feel manly because mm -hmm. a lot of uh life the world around us now has sort of emasculated us Is that the right word emasculated yeah i think it has yeah, yeah. yeah. it's emasculated us there's nothing that we can do that allows us to beat our chests and proclaim our, our testosterone based um desires so we we collect things like tools uh, because we justify to ourselves that we will go and um and build a rocket ship or fix the car or repair the motorbike or things like that which we will never do uh, no, no, no 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 that's that's not true that's not true if i will never do no, other people no, might no, do. No, no, no. What? You come on, you know that. You know the drill. If we say that we're gonna do something, we're gonna do it. There's no, there's no need of reminding us every six months. Exactly. There's no need to once every ten years in the anniversary reminding us that I said I was gonna do that because I will. Yeah. It is yeah. on the list, right? It's it is on the list. Gonna be done. But here's the thing, right? I actually used this. I bought this years ago, uh, and I, I actually used it this weekend. Uh, I the radio, yeah. The, the radiators went working and I watched a YouTube um, video that told me that I needed to unscrew the, the top and mm -hmm. that the pin would, uh, would, would, would get stuck because it hadn't been used over the summertime. And I needed to, 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 to and then hit it a little bit and then yeah. tap it up and down. So I did that. And it worked. Yeah. Have you, refilled, have you refilled the circuit now? What? Don't look. I'm. Don't take away the take, wind. If you take air out of the radiator system, yeah, the pressure of the system. No, 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 no. I'm not taking air out. This is just the needle that adjusts the thermostat. So the oh. thermostat, when you twiddle the thermostat, all it does is it pushes down on a pin. The pin gets stuck in summertime because it's not being right. moved up and down at all. So what you do is you give it. You open this up, and you use the flat head of this to push down the pin. And if right. it doesn't push down, you use the other end to give it. 
light little taps, but it has to be heavy, but light taps. And mm -hmm. then you push it down again, and then you light tap and then push down again. And eventually the pin starts to move. Right. And okay. then you can, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about the thermostat um, thing in my bobs. Exactly. Thing. Well, I mean, that's technical, but yes, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, right. yeah. So there we go. And hey, Max, let's wrap it up. It's only one hour and 10 minutes in. Uh, I know and this time has passed like for what? like that. Yeah, but because we, we're fun. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and we're gonna see you next week. We'll see how this like if 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 this works, this whole video thing works. Yeah. Like I uploaded and and it and it looks good. I'm gonna see how I look on it. It's obviously what the most important well, you, thing is that I look exactly great. the way you look. Yeah, it's exactly the way you look now. No, it's not because I'm going to put a filter over the top of me that's going to let me look young. I'm looking for a filter that says, I don't know, something like a Japanese anime, maybe, or um, something, maybe like a like a like a Greek statue kind of on my skin. I need to smooth that out a little bit. I need to to get rid of the wrinkles, the crow's eyes. Those need to go. Uh, I might send it away to to maybe a lab in Korea or something, and they can edit it, uh, and we'll mm. see how it looks. But anyway, basically, if I come back looking like a movie star, we'll continue with these uh, these videos. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or like that? Oh, please, God, no. Uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't work anymore. Um, it doesn't work anymore. You need a green screen, Max. No, no, it, it worked. It used to work in um, um, with the. Um, with the previous there you go that's that's even better that's actually an improvement yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> please let's end this that guess was saying we're torturing people now <laughs> i'll see you uh i'll see you next week we're gonna have a talk next week we will be talking yeah. about the burundi mm -hmm. uh, which i i know i'm going to enjoy and um maybe your christmas present would have arrived by then which which if it has I mean, I can't really be sure because of the whole COVID thing, but if it has arrived by then, it's going to be a sweet surprise. It's going to, we're going to have a good, a good conversation around that. I am scared. You should scared be interested. <laughs> You're scared. You should be scared. Mm. I'm more interested. Yeah, it's going to be I'm great. Worried. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's, it's going to be good. All right, buddy. <laughs> See you later. See you. Wait.